Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another spooky video. Um, we have today our cold brew and our crime. Okay, not quite. This is cold brew, but today's not really a crime case. It's more of a haunting, a little spooky, spooky. And it's actually one of the reasons why I wanted to do it is it's because the photographs that have been taken at this particular place are some of the most famous paranormal photographs ever. Without, you know, further ado, because I do like my little chat, at the beginning of every video. Let's get right into the video. Our story starts with a man named General David Bradford. He actually fled from Pennsylvania to a little town in Louisiana called St. Francisville because in Pennsylvania, the government was putting this tax on whiskey. And you know, this just happened to be good old General Bradford's favorite drink and him and some other boys were not super happy about this and planned a march on Pittsburgh. When the president, George Washington, got ear that General David Bradford was behind this, he was, you know, going after him. So he fled to Louisiana and decided that he was going to build this massive plantation by a swamp. So then in 1796, he acquired the land to do this and began building this plantation. The legend goes that on the land, there was actually a burial ground for the Tanika tribe in Louisiana, which is actually still a tribe today in Louisiana. But, you know, very, very similar to a lot of these other kind of urban legend ghost stories indigenous burial grounds are often involved in them. The legend goes that instead of Bradford, you know, kind of deciding that this might not be the best place to build a plantation, he just dug up all of the skeletons that he found and set them on fire. So he actually was on kind of house arrest in this plantation for three years. He was kind of like exiled from the country until President John Adams pardoned him. So, you know, time passes, eventually good old General David Bradford, you know, uh, passes away and his daughter, Sarah, and her husband, Judge Clark Waldroff, took over the plantation and started taking care of Sarah's mother. And they eventually ended up having three children together, two little girls and one little girl. So this is where we kind of get into our ghostly legend tale. Sorry, I'm just gonna get a little bit of a sippy sippy. I am like feeling the fall vibes today. Anyhow, so this is kind of where our legend starts. The legend goes that there was this enslaved girl named Chloe, and she kind of acted as the nanny for all three of their children, and she was also Clark's mistress. Chloe was known for being a bit of an eavesdropper. Um, she's a bit of a gossip, you know, like gotta love her. One day she was caught with her right ear up against a door listening into a conversation between Clark and Sarah. And when they caught her, they punished her by cutting off her ear. And as I'm sure you can guess, Miss Chloe was, you know, not too happy about this. She was, you know, she was a little ticked, rightfully so. I would want my ear. So then um, good old Chloe came up with this plot. Some say it was to get revenge. Others say it was to win Clark's affection back. But basically what she was going to do when Clark was out of town during one of the young girl's birthdays, she was going to poison her birthday cake with an oleander leaf. Oleander? Ole. And serve this to the daughters and Sarah. And then when they would get sick, she was going to nurse them back to health and kind of prove her loyalty to the family, so to speak. However, her plan didn't quite go her way and they ended up actually dying, the mother and both of the daughters. Obviously, Clark was not too happy about this and started asking the servants, like, you know, what do you know? And the servants kind of just having to look out for themselves didn't want them to be blamed for it. So they, you know, they said, Chloe is, you know, she did it. So that same night, he took her out and hung her and then threw her body in the swamp. So that is the legend. 
However, we do have to fax check some of it because as fun as that little story is, it is not entirely factual. Sarah did pass away pretty early on in her life and so did her, two of her children. However, it was her son and one of her daughters. Her other daughter actually lived a full life into her 70s. The three of them died from yellow fever. None of them died from poisoning. That is what, you know, the record says. However, you know, they could have lied. We never know. Skipping ahead way into the future, in 1992, the owner of the plantation at the time was trying to get fire insurance for the plantation. So he had to take pictures of how far away each of the buildings were from each other to see if how likely it was for a building to catch the other building on fire. So while they were taking these pictures, they noticed that it looked like there was this woman in the picture in between the two buildings. So obviously they had some questions about this because there was no woman there at the time that could have been in this picture. There was no shadow that made sense. So the owners of the plantation actually ended up sending this photograph off to National Geographic. And there they looked at it pixel by pixel. And I'm not gonna get into like the details of photographs because half of it I don't even understand, but they determined that not one of those pixels in the photograph had been altered from the time it was taken. And none of the settings on the camera would have made an apparition look like that in the photograph. And they sent it off to so many experts and every single one of them came back and said, we have no idea what this is. We have no idea how it got here. Like it looks like a person like standing there. So then eventually in 1995, Norman Benot actually went to the plantation and asked if he could investigate this photograph. And he ended up enlarging it and doing a shadow density portion test on it, which basically he was trying to determine whether or not the affirmation in the photograph was proportionate to a regular sized person. Came out that it completely was. Everything from head to toe, shoulder to wrist, elbow to shoulder, elbow to wrist, everything was proportionate of a woman. So obviously you can probably have guessed that the legend believes that this woman in the photograph and this ghost that is sometimes seen on this plantation is the ghost of Chloe. However, that is not the only ghost seen on this plantation. There has also been, I believe, twin like little blonde girls dressed in antebellum clothing. And there is also a groundskeeper who is often seen. People will say that they'll be driving in. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, the plantation now is actually an inn and you can stay there. You can select any room you wanna sleep in, whether you wanna sleep in Clark's room, whether you sleep in David Bradford's room from the beginning. Um, it's actually really cool. And like, I, looking into this case, like I kind of wanna stay there. I'll insert pictures of it here. It's gorgeous. Guests will say that they'll be driving in and that this man will come up to them and basically like tell them to leave. They're not welcome, blah, 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 blah. So it's believed that this is this ghost of a groundskeeper who doesn't think that other people should be staying there unless they are family. There was also a, another photograph taken of, I believe it's like five women on vacation. You can see in the back of the photo this head and this is believed again to be the ghost of Chloe. This photograph was not investigated so it definitely could have been tampered with and I personally think that out of all of the photographs I'll be showing in this video that this one looks the most like there's like actually something in the window making it look like that and obviously this inn is going to be profiting on the fact that people think that it's haunted. There's also another photograph taken of a teacher and her student and in the back of the photograph you can see the outline of this little girl and she's dressed in antebellum clothing um, which is the same time period from the time that Sarah's daughter would have died. I believe they call her the ghost girl. Again, they like capitalize it at the end. This picture was actually sent to David Young, who is a paranormal investigator, and he was really, really stumped by this picture. Again, it was investigated pixel by pixel, and he could not find anything wrong with it. And obviously when you see apparitions in photographs, like people are very skeptical that they're photoshopped or that it's the lighting or smudges on the lens or something like that. And he could not figure out what this was. So he ended up sending it to the Society of Psychological Research in England. And this was established in like 1812 and it is extremely well known in like the paranormal world. And no one there could figure out 
what was in this picture. So again, like I said before in the video, the plantation is now turned into an inn and you can stay there. They do ghost tours and everything like that. And I don't know, I kind of believe that these are real. I definitely think that just the fact that this was a plantation with everything that would have happened there with slavery is enough to kind of open the door for paranormal activity, not to mention if the whole indigenous burial ground theory is factual. So over the span of the 200 years since this plantation has been built, there has been 10 murders recorded to have happened on the plantation, um, and that would have not included anyone who would have died any slave that would have died. These are only like the actual murders that were reported. So again, that is just another thing that could have opened the door to some, you know, some creepy shit. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think of this um, legend and this plantation in general in the comments. And I will see you guys tomorrow for a, another Halloween themed video. Thank you so much for watching.